Uh, so this is the Central Business Architecture Committee meeting on Tuesday, July 11th, 2017. Um, there are no public here, so there's no public comment. And tonight we're reviewing the guideline edits um, and further discussion on changes proposed to exempt projects and reviewing um, minutes. So, uh, what would you like to start with, Carolyn? Um, Maybe the um, first thing would be to start with um, just circling back to the last discussion about the exempt um, items that um, you know you you guys uh, um, agreed were uh, it would be good to um, have more oversight over those items that are exempt. And I just want to pull in I, the reason why I wanted to bring it back is because I took back and was thinking more about the language, which I did, I think I emailed to you, but it's been a couple of weeks probably, so you have to, you have to tell me if you saw them, but I have them up here, is um, basically we went through the list of things that you were, there were about three items in the exempt category that um, you all felt were important to have someone other than the building commissioner review to just confirm that they should be exempt. And, um, so, um, the looking at at the path that, is, and I had recommended this path, so I'm not saying you know trying to say that we did it the wrong way or anything like that. It was just sort of on reflection. Um, I think to change the code, I think the better thing to do was instead of having the building commissioner determine that they're exempt and then have a second review that's not advertised or not posted by um, committee members, that um, we work within the context of the existing language, but adding, there's a paragraph above that exempt paragraph, which I'll pull up on the screen, that um, talks about um, applying for a certificate of non-applicability. And so that process has already been adopted and it's in place. So I think um, uh, sort of on, in, with further conversation with um, Wayne Feiden about um, how it might be best to incorporate um, some subcommittee or some committee review of those exempt projects, maybe just use the existing um, framework that's there, but pull those items out and put them up and specify that they don't even go, the building department doesn't look at those, they automatically have to come for a certificate of non-applicability. And it's a, it's a shortened process, so it's not a public hearing, but you would designate the language, um, talks about having a subcommittee that has to review them uh, within 14 days or else they're automatically deemed to be exempt. So um, I think that spells out a process and it's cleaner and it's already there so it's not like you're changing, you know, turning everything upside down. Mm -hmm. um, so I thought I could just pull, um, pull that language out because I didn't have a chance to send the existing text to you before the meeting tonight, but I have it up, I can pull it up on the screen. Okay. Um, so, um, let's see, chapter 156. So. So at the very top of the, um, I think I can expand this over here. Except, no, it's done. Okay. <laughs> So there's this paragraph, um, paragraph, I believe it's A,
Want to read it to us? <laughs> yeah. So it says, um, so paragraph A currently says, the Central Business Architecture Committee shall appoint a subcommittee or agent and authorize that subcommittee or agent to issue a certificate of non-applicability under this section. Such certificate certification is not required, but is provided to provide an applicant documentation that a permit is not required. There are very few people that have ever taken advantage of that. So the idea was, so that's paragraph A. And paragraph C, are, it says the, the following elements are specifically exempt from review by the committee. The building commissioner shall issue permits for this work after determining that those projects are exempt. So what we had talked about last time is through that, that whole section, all those items in C, there were some that you um, had talked about, um, particularly window replacements and other things where there's judgment about in-kind replacements. Um, you had redlined um, item 10, 11, 12, 17, um, and 18 as items to that you would want to pull back for review. So um, what we talked about internally in our office was taking those items and pulling them out of paragraph C that the building commissioner determines are exempt and putting them back up in paragraph A um, such that it would read the Central Business Architecture Committee shall appoint a subcommittee or agent and authorize that subcommittee or agent to use a to issue a certificate of non-applicability for the following, and then move those items up there. And then keep the language about that anybody could apply for non-applicability if they wanted to, but sort of have that as um, secondary. And then, um, and so you might want to also in that change, um, Central Business Architecture Committee shall appoint a subcommittee you could, in this change, say um, the subcommittee could be comprised of, you know, the chair and staff or something, or OPS staff or something like that. You could keep it open-ended if you wanted to, but then there would be a constant sort of um, check-in to see who's available. So it might be cleaner to specify it's going to be the chair of the committee with a staff person from our office. Um, and then spell out what you know that time frame is it and then the next one it says you know the process is that someone applies for these those items so people would know going in that they're going to have to apply for this non-applicability um, and so they would do that step instead of going to the building department and waiting for the building commissioner to make the determination does that sound reasonable and Appropriate. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Do we need to make a motion for that? Um, yeah. I mean, you. I, I don't. You could. I don't know. That's necessary because what happens? This is going to be an ordinance change, so this is going to have to run back through. So I'll have to draft it as an ordinance, which I had already started to do, and then started sort of rethinking about the structure of it. So what? I, what's going to happen is we're going to put this back through, and city council may refer it to you. I think we talked about this when it goes to city council that someone should, would, be, present. should be present for the public hearing. So I think, um, um, you know, formally, yes, you can take a vote to say that we'll make those modifications before I send it to council. I think that would actually be good, a good thing. Um, but it, you will see it again. It's not like the, the you know, it's going to go forward to yeah. public hearing. Okay. To ask for the non-applicability uh, I mean, that means whatever they're requesting is not in the guidelines, correct? And those points that you mentioned, which I don't know off the top of my head, yeah. say, whatever, right. those would kick in and require that person who is hoping to get a non-applicable permission, they would have to go before a parking Well, right. so what this is, it's like an intermediate step. It's sort of, for these select items, so um, storm doors and windows that are not visible from, the, well, that one may be able to stay, but let's say, so maybe there aren't. The ones that you um, modified were storm windows that are not visible from the street. You just clarified that. I'm not sure you necessarily want to pull that in um, to also confirm, but if you do. So the idea would be 
that there are some items, um, the reconstruction, the one, the big one I think was the reconstructions substantially similar in exterior design and appearance of a building structure or exterior architecture feature damaged or destroyed by fire, storm, or other disaster, provided that such reconstruction has begun within one year thereafter and carried forward with due diligence. So that one is has some interpretation to it. It's reconstruction is substantially similar. So instead of saying that the building commissioner gets to determine that those are exempt, it would go up to the subcommittee as a quick, you know, posted, like we could do it within 48 hours or certainly within a week period to say, hey, is this exempt? If it's not, then that after that determination is made, then they would have to apply for the full committee to review the change. So it's really just taking a few of the things that are have been previously deemed as exempt and having a different set of eyes looking at them to confirm that they should be exempt. So yeah, I'm just wondering, the wording you talked about, a subcommittee or an agent, uh -huh. Do you need to qualify the agent as being a member of the committee acting as an agent? Um, I Somebody think, might say, oh, you hire a consultant. Oh, yes, so. you could. Um, I Typically, um, staff has been the default agent okay. of an, a committee, but it, may, it totally makes sense to say, you know, if you're going to say chair and OPS staff, right. Yeah. Then that clears that Paul. Yeah, by saying chair, that always makes her responsible for it. Do you want to take on that? Well, she could quit her job. Well, <laughs> <be> <laughs> new, she could say, I'm not sure. A, a, a new chair, new chair <laughs> who gets to right. do that. I mean, I'm mm -hmm. sure mm -hmm. there's only going to be one or two instances yeah. a year, possibly. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so. I don't think it's a big deal. Okay. Well, the no, other thing say. you could say is the chair or Designated. 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 Yeah, right. Designated. Yeah. yeah, so it could yeah. be an instance where it, if it has to be reviewed within 14 or 7 days, yeah. then you right. might be able to Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So the chair or you or the other chair. Or <laughs> alternate <laughs> yeah. committee member. Yeah. Okay. Um, so. Okay. Okay, and then we'll take out the word agent. Um, so let me ask you before you vote on this, the, the three items, I'll, I'll pull this one out, I think you'll be able to manipulate it better. Um, uh, the exempt items that were pulled out for modification include number 10, um, Storm doors and storm windows, screens, um, air conditioners, rooftop solar panels that are not visible from the street. So you're adding a language that are not visible from a street. Um, lighting fixtures and antennas, satellite dish antennas with a diameter greater than one foot are not exempt. So um, anything less than that would be. So um, with those red line changes, are you still comfortable with the building commissioner um, issuing that exemption or would you want that pulled up? to the committee level. Those items seem to be pretty clear that the building commissioner would okay. be able to review so, them. Um, and then the next one, roof colors, paint and stain colors, and painting of, and you're striking unpainted for painted, because that was a mistake. That was <laughs> probably. So I think, um, so do you feel like the commissioner can evaluate that as well? I'm sorry, could you repeat the whole? Uh, roof colors, paint, and stain colors, and painting of painted masonry and all non-masonry structures. Yeah, because that's at, that's not in the guidelines. Yeah. Right. Okay. And then number 12 is the reconstruction substantially similar in exterior design appearance of the structure if it's been destroyed by fire. I think we talked about that, that one. Yeah. Okay. 
Teaching some move off. Replacement I of <laughs> windows. Oh, let me go to the next page. Sun was like. So um, replacement of a window with a new window of the same general design and appearance, but change in materials when the building commissioner and the committee or its designee um, determines replacement shall blah, 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 blah. So I think that one you wanted to bump up to. Yes. So, okay, let's confirm. And number 18 looks like it's very similar to the one you just um, before about restoration of features of the same general design and appearance as existed historically on a structure um, when the committee or designee finds that there's adequate evidence to believe that restoration is accurate. You want that bumped up too. Okay. And I think, oh, street sidewalks, utility poles, infrastructure that's within the right of way. There was just a, a tweaking of that language. I assume that can stay with the building commissioner. Okay, all right. Okay, so I'll make those changes. I will send that out, but then the next time you see it, it'll probably be, it will be referred to city council, just go straight there. You know, this whole window thing, I always, I get a little confused. I just want to maybe can help clarify it. But for example, like that Masonic Street yep. structure, Weren't those supposed to be SDLs, and who gave permission for them to be built between the glass? So I Is that applies directly to what you right. just said. I mean, if that was Louie right. making that mistake or oversight, I think it was it a mistake. Go before the committee. Yes, I think it was supposed to go to. The, I think I still haven't found out. Louie's been gone in and out. They lost Chuck. Yeah. So I think there had been. I think it's my understanding that it went through. Someone else reviewed it. I, I don't have confirmation of that yet. So I think it, um, it may have been an error. It may not have been. I don't know. So, um, but yes, so that's well, we sort of part of that. Exactly. Right. And this, that, this is sort of another step that clarifies that yeah. that needs to be reviewed. Right. So that type of review would then come up to this sort of intermediate review for non applicability. Okay. So that's all for that. So if you guys want to. Could I get a motion to approve the revisions as discussed? Okay, I'll make a motion that we yeah. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. <laughs> Thank you. I didn't want to make count. I'll have to repeat all that. <laughs> okay. And um, that's sort of it. So we can move that forward. Um, you know, soon, so that gets in place um, ahead of all the other big changes that you guys are talking about that that we can move into next. But I think that will be a longer process. But um, I think it makes sense to just go ahead and push this forward, even though we're still working on the other thing. When do you think it would go to the city council? Um, well, I can. Um, You're on vacation. <laughs> well, you know, city council meets once in July. I'd probably have it ready. They are meeting this week, so it's not going to go in July. So we'd probably go for their August meeting. But they don't look at it then. They just refer it out. So then if it goes to in August, then the first possible public hearing date wouldn't be till September. Realized there were still some 
open-ended questions, I thought, about mm -hmm. some um, sort of discussion items that came up, but that either weren't confirmed or I didn't record it. So um, I think there are some of those there, and um, so we can maybe start tackling those you know, from the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I left question, like red-lined question marks by them because I wasn't sure, but um, I'll have to pull that. change stuff but she said you know if she has breaks she'll she'll do this and so far she hasn't had a break <laughs> yes. well I noticed on the index of photograph photographs mm -hmm. you have in the beginning you, you add some little pressure marks and, okay um, yeah let me see that. if I can uh, I guess it just got started being edited so. yeah I guess it was June 29th Just 
complementary um, design. And that would be really a new building. Yeah. In fact, that uh, looks like it belongs. Okay, I'm just making notes here so I can go back. So, like those new pleasant buildings, pleasant street buildings. Yeah. Will they look like they belong? I don't know. Well, with the curved facade there, I don't know. I, you know, Peter's building may. I think it's kind of interesting, you know, it's taken on a very traditional form, but it has people like kind of anomalies to it. Well, and I mean, you know, as building, you know, we're hoping this work on Pleasant Street, you know, is an incentive that there's public investment and then maybe there'll be private investment, you know, down the road on that, in that corridor. So we might see, you know, new changes come along and it's sort of, you know, it's a mix corridor, it's not exactly like Main Street, which also sort of leads into the next question of should we identify it as sort of, it's part of central business, but it has a different kind of character. You know, it's not uniformly like the core, you know, Main Street. Um, so, um, and, and you know, I think one of the things that I think would be beneficial would be to identify those areas. Um, we are, we do, we did end up um, finding a pot of money out of um, a combination, I guess, of Complete Streets and Healthy Hampshire grants that we had to move forward on a really tiny um, uh, project to do uh, create some guidance for form-based code for the public realm, so for the streets, and how we want streets to be designed in the central business district. So that, those consultants that are working on that are going to be identifying treatments depending on where it's located within the downtown core. So um, I think it makes sense to call out you know, have a uniform name for those various areas that, so in, this, in the public realm, you know, we're gonna assign certain um, design requirements or characteristics, and then for that same, um, on the private side, for the buildings, we might wanna use the same name, you know, for, the, for that area. And I don't know what that would be, if, but I think, um, you know, we could also wait on this to see what the consultants come up with sort of by defining those sections and because um, they're sort of looking at, you know, more dense commercial and then more of a neighborhood character feel. Um, so they're starting to identify those labels too. So um, one of the things that I think would be important is probably to put um, finalizing this document on hold and sort of wait so they can sort of come together and make sure there aren't inconsistencies and that mm -hmm. you know we're calling things the same but mm -hmm. um, at the same time you all might have ideas about how you might want to label those different areas or identify them for maybe different types of guidance in terms of architectural details or, mm -hmm. But we don't, we don't, we don't do that right now. We don't differentiate. It's just a central business district. Right. There's no difference between. The only differentiation. That's what you were talking about sub-districts? Yeah. Or areas within yeah. here? So the only differentiation is with these building types. You right. Know, theme, anomaly, transitional, residential. And they're not geographically hmm. determined or right. located. So this would sort of create maybe some geography to those identifying characteristics. Yeah, um, certainly you have the core area and then um, you've already used the term transitional but something like uh, Pleasant Street would be uh, transitional coming into the core area yeah. uh, and it would be transitional from residential hotels or whatever it would be uh, sort of the approach to the city. Yeah. Um, but I, I think a geographical distinction you know, might be good. Um, I mean, we've talked about, about the core and yeah. then the approaches or something. Right. We've definitely talked about in on the zoning side. We've talked about those as gateway corridors. So, 
And I think the same could be said for King Street, you know, coming right. in yeah, exactly. to town. Um, so there might be some commonalities, mm -hmm. although you have, well, you have some residential characteristics on the King Street mm -hmm. side too. Um, so, you know, maybe maybe it's just sort of food for thought to sort of yeah. um, move, um, keep that in the back of your mind as we move forward, but knowing that also there's this other consultant group that's looking at the streets and trying to identify, sort of characterize those as well. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe I'll just keep this as an open question mark here. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Within the planning department, like you and Wayne, your other staff, do you have a vision of how you see like Lower Pleasant Street, like the Gateway area? I mean, there's your own personal opinions, I realize, yeah. but do you have a do you have some opinions on that? Uh, or are you just waiting to see? Yeah, no, I mean, well, we have some opinions, but we've also, we've also worked with neighborhood, the neighborhood groups and the chamber to come up with um, um, ideas in, and we have a strategic plan for the Pleasant Tree Corridor, and that's actually what led and enabled us to be successful in the grant application for making those modifications to the street. So the idea that was developed through, I mean, our office initiated it, but we had several public meetings about sort of what do we, what does Pleasant Street want to be and become? And so that is really um, trying to increase the intensity of uses there. Um, there are some, um, you know, single-story buildings that, and um, sort of mid-century set back from the street that pro that aren't as friendly to pedestrian activity. So the, the initial idea is to to extend that um, sense of um, interest and in, and in destination down Pleasant Street and make it more pedestrian friendly. So we started with that street. Um, um, project of you know making it safer for people who currently live on both sides of the corridor to feel like they're they can be safe walking along the street either going up to Main Street or potentially stopping in and you know going to shops or their office or whatever on Pleasant Street so then that idea is to hopefully we would generate an interest for reinvestment in buildings to build up to the street build taller um, you know and fill in a lot of those gaps all the way down to the roundabout. So it's going to take some zoning changes. There's lots of steps involved because part of it is that the state still um, has jurisdiction over the right of way to the roundabout, but that's going to change fairly soon. The, once they finish the roundabout and sort of cleaned up everything, they were going to give that to the city. From the roundabout up, uh, it's going to be all city. To the city, yeah. to all city. Right. Yeah. But you know, like my, you know, my shop is down in that area, kind of stuff. You know, like you get down near that area, like by service center. You know, there's a huge parking lot and that old low-rise like telephone building that right. you can really see that will be developed someday. I yeah. mean, it's too precious for real estate just to sit there. Well, I mean, and that so whole <laughs> block, really, from Cons to Pleasant Street, is you know one right. story with big. Parking. Yeah, but then you know you have the block where like um, you know like where Northampton Coffee is and mm -hmm. you know where Peter did yeah. that facade. That whole yeah. block is pretty much a three-story. Right. Then you go just down past like the Hugo's and the bicycle shop, and then there's that that mill bank which is right. kind of set back, in right. there, which yeah. is the older way of doing things. Mm -hmm. You're stuck with that yeah. for until the life of that building. Right. But you want to pull it forward all the way down, yeah. hopefully. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you know, that building, the mill bank, won't transition, you know, in our lifetimes, probably. Right. Yeah. But there are other buildings that are closer to that point, probably, to transition. So, yeah. I mean, it'll certainly be one of those things that is very incremental. <laughs> Okay. One edit down. <laughs> Not really. So long. Okay. Let's go up here. Do my search. 
So I noticed at the very beginning you've crossed out like a, a lot of stuff. You're just saying that you're taking out sort of um, yeah that it was prepared a long time ago that this is an update. Yeah, I feel like this. So um, I. Um, I think this is sort of there's we can have this as historical reference, but um, the other piece of it is there's a lot of language in here about how the city came to want mm -hmm. this, and um, um, my thinking was we don't need to have that anymore because it's been here for 20 years, and this is what it is, and we're <laughs> moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what a lot of that strikes. <laughs> yeah, and I guess in somewhere it's, it just says updated in 2017, right? Yeah, the, yeah, at the very beginning, yeah. Okay. Um, so you were asking when Bob came on, so this originally was adopted in 1999. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it's 18. 18 years. <laughs> <laughs> That's my lifetime. <laughs> 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 lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> Half of something. <laughs> okay, so I'm looking for a question mark. Oh. Okay. Oh, so I don't, this is not probably a question mark for the committee. These are for me. You, just notes, removing old pictures that don't exist, which makes sense. And I think I've done that, I've started to do that, but these are just sort of notes for me. I still have a list of photos that I wanna, um, that I haven't gotten yet, um, that it would just be easier for me to get than the intern, so, mm. <laughs> so I know exactly where they are and what they need to be, so. Um, but uh, some of these I've added, so that's, Oh, did we define, okay, so this highlights all the question marks. <laughs> um, the first one was, what is an historic building? Did we, um, I don't know if we came to a decision about what, because there's a definition. I thought we here. said 50 years and older. I thought we did too, but I just want to make sure why I didn't erase that question. Let me see. Constructed more than 50 years. It's So then, maybe I already checked. So theme buildings are typically Victorian period characters of 19th and early 20th century design. Um, so this I wasn't clear on. Um, this is sort of defining what a theme building is. I don't know if you can see that text. If you want me to blow it up. Okay, so theme buildings are typically Victorian period characteristics, 
characteristic of 19th and early 20th century design. So the question is, did you want to do it by character or age? Or both? Well, I have trouble with the word Victorian. <laughs> um, because not differentiating between Victorian, Edwardian, um, you know, anything like that. And Victoria ends in what, 1901? Um, and then you, you're really looking at the you know, early 20th century that has a lot of the same characteristics. Uh, but um, most architectural historians cringe at the word Victorian. Uh, that there's too many other ways to describe that. So I think if you would say, you know, mid late and early, mid, late 19th century, early 20th century. Um, I think that would keep up a lot of people happy. Okay, so strike Victorian. <laughs> well, I mean, you could just drop the Victorian out of it, right? right. The theme building could typically, right. um, I mean, it's, it's a late 19th century, term. early 20th century. Architecture. Yeah, because then you pick up Art Deco and things like that. Oh, wait, it's theme buildings are typically late 19th century. Late 19th and early 20th, and early 20th, century, 20th design. century design. Mm -hmm. Two to five story masonry commercial. So, okay, so this goes should mirror the other language, demolition of historic buildings, those built um, more than 50 years ago. I'm just wondering if that language should coordinate with the um, demolition de delay ordinance that uh, Historical Commission reviews. And I'm not sure what the date is for that. Um, well, I think you could argue that they could be different um, because you have different missions and focus, okay. but you could probably, um, I don't know what the, I don't know the dates off the top of my head, I could yeah, look it up. But. but it occurs to me as a, an applicant coming in to read this and then to find out that, oh, well, we have to go before the Historical Commission also. Or this, which, which one? Yeah, it's a confusing thing. So it's it might require a footnote or something. So, um, I don't think historical commission looks at anything in central business district except for St. Mary's Church, <laughs> which is in Elm Street historic. Right. Um. And or mm -hmm. if there's, um, you know, ta uh, public tax money going and um, MHC wants the local. Yeah, but I'm thinking the demolition delay, which is citywide as opposed to. It's only citywide everywhere except central except business. Yeah. Okay. Yeah.
Um, so I had a note in here about not using this picture, but I don't know if that was from somebody on the committee or um, someone else. I made notes on it, so I don't know if that clarifies it. What's the what is the picture picturing? What's it defining? Guideline for yeah, they just changed the facade in the past buildings. two weeks. That's a, a new facade on the frame and art part of the building. Really. A new facade? Well, not facade. Oh, a new sign and yeah. everything like that. Whoops. So um, it's on, it's guideline three renovations to anomaly buildings, and. Um, so, um, this is an example of how not to renovate an anomaly building. by putting a western facade on it. <laughs> um, so, if you're fine with keeping that, that's fine. I just had a question mark by it. Oops, it's not showing up there yet. Boy, if there's a slow... I guess it's, it's because of Wi-Fi. <laughs> There we go. There we go. <laughs> um, I think maybe um, I might have been the one that flagged that. It wasn't completely clear what the renovation was to that building. Oh, OK. Um, I mean, it looks almost like that's just a really old building. Yeah. <laughs> so I, well, I did make a note on that. It's also a really dark picture. I think it's hard to tell. Yeah. I mean, it, part of it is it's just a... Uh, yeah, it's really in the shadow. You can't really see that facade, which is, I think, wood boards, right? Isn't it just like yeah. on yeah. board up there? So, yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Do you guys happen to have an, an example off the top of your head that you want me to shoot and put in? Or do you want me to just take a walk around? <laughs> take a better picture? <laughs> Oh, or take a better picture of this. Do that. It might look okay. better now. Okay. I don't know. Does it look better now? <laughs> it's cleaner looking. I don't think the subway will be there. <laughs> the subway's not there anymore? I feel like no, the subway's there. there. It's the it framing places oh, now. Okay. Um, some sort of computer telephony thing. Right. Cricket. Cricket, that's it. It's in the paper. Um, okay. If telephone. I take a new shot. And, or if I can find another one. That's 122. Time of day. Okay. The picture of the James house is pretty bad too. You know that one? The, the one that's in here now? Yeah, it's very washed out. Really, uh, exposure. So it's up, I don't know. Well, I, I had like four or five shots of those. I'll, try, I'll go and get another one. I didn't realize that. Yeah, it's on like the ninth or tenth page there. Okay. The design guy kind of like that at all. Serendipitous effect, that page. It might be. Uh, but it, it did come through on my email like that, but I saw it go by here and it was clear. So I don't know. Did you send it as a PDF or as a. I sent this as a PDF. I thought I sent it as a PDF. Because I know that that had been a problem before. Um, that's strange. I went, were a lot of the pictures washed out? Like no, that? just no, that was the only one. That's why I, was, so, I thought it was just a bad shot. One more try at the academy with this, without the stupid car out front. What's that? <laughs> the picture of the academy. Oh, I know it's hard. Right. It's a stupid car right in okay. the corner. Otherwise, it's a really nice photo of the, at the academy. Well, you know what? It might make sense to put a new one in there anyway because the, new, the, the marquee. marquee. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That one doesn't show oh, the marquee. Oh, I didn't really look at it. Look like that. I know a lot of these pictures were 
there's some old cars in there. I was like, oh, that looks so 70s. <laughs> 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 Okay. I'll so check we that. Um, we said we were they were filming out of old school you said. Okay, here we go. Um I know. historic landmark and transitional residential buildings should retain their traditional patterns of fenestration on the ground floor. So my question here is, I think that's a conflict. I don't know if we talked about this before. Um, the transitional residential, the idea is that anything goes, basically you can make changes to transitional residential because the idea is to make it more like a theme commercial. So, well, I guess it's confusing because it says historic landmark and transitional, or was and transitional oh, right. residential added to that sentence. I think we might have been saying to take out and transitional residential. Oh, okay. So it just says historic landmark building. Okay. I think That's so, what yeah. that is? Okay. All right, good. Thanks. Because, I mean, a transitional residential, we didn't have like traditional patterns of penetration right. or anything on the right, floor. Right. Uh, okay, so that was my misunderstanding. Do you mean maybe should but theme um, should theme buildings be pretty good with that? No, because we allow theme buildings to have more storefront if they want. If they want more glass, yeah. they can have more glass. Yeah. Okay. No, this makes sense. That. Back to that page you were just on. There was a note on that. I don't. Know. Oh, but not required. That should be. Can you put, uh, Is that what you're talking about? Well, can you just go back to that page you were literally just on where you made that edit? Yeah, it's um, taking its time. Oh, okay. Just count to. <laughs> it's right here. I have to go up to space and back. There we go. <laughs> we'll see that the, the, the replication of storefront below in the bottom there. I have to delete that. But it's highlighted. Yeah. I didn't catch that before. So think, you're going to delete that highlight? Yes. Okay. If I can find my. There we go. Why don't they just 
sitting to him like a cheerless. On the outside? No. <laughs> <laughs> it's not as big as a ramp. No, it's you not. Can, you, can, you can ask the applicant that in the public hearing. <laughs> Um, I think we're done for tonight. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I get. I will try to make an effort to look at whatever you sent out. Mm -hmm. um, so that a little more prepared next time. Um, can we submit questions to you, or should we need to wait till there's a meeting? You can submit them individually to me. Okay. Just um, not to the whole committee. Okay. Um, could I get a motion to? Close the meeting. <laughs> All in favor? 